Hello YouTube, I'm Hamish Todd. Uh, I suppose a lot of you have just seen the film Interstellar, and like me, you're very interested in what was supposed to be happening at the ending there. Uh, and I'm going to be sharing some speculations with you in this video. I think you can only call them speculations. Um, it's pretty clear that some of the mathematical ideas that they were referring to, but um, there was probably something that Kip Thorne, their physics consultant, had in mind when he was uh, asking them, well, when they were asking him about what should happen here. Um, there's definitely, uh, you know, it's not necessarily all physically plausible and um, or uh, technologically plausible, uh, but it's certainly something that mathematically should allow us to have some fun, to allow us to speculate about uh, higher dimensional mathematics. And I've studied a little bit of special relativity, of, well, I studied undergraduate special relativity, I studied a bit of topology, a bit of higher dimensional linear algebra. Um, I'm not the perfect person to talk about this, you'd need to have a graduate um, general relativity person, um, but yeah, I'm going to share with you what, okay, what makes sense to me. Okay, so first what we do is uh, something very much like they, what they did in the film when they were explaining the wormhole, where they said, imagine the universe is a piece of paper, and imagine uh, we take a little circle out of this part of the universe and a little circle out of this part of the universe, and then we bend the universe somehow and we join those circles together. Um, and that's sort of what a wormhole is, that allows you to go from this part of the universe to this part of the universe without having to cross the whole universe. Um, we're going to do something, and there's a very, that's a very good explanation there. Um, and we're going to do something, we're going to have to go even simpler in a way. Uh, they thought about the universe as a flat sheet, a two-dimensional thing, but we're going to think about the universe as a one-dimensional thing, just a line, in just a single line. That's our world. And we're going to imagine a single little worm thing on that line, okay? And we're going to say that we care a lot about this worm. We care about the future of this little worm's worm civilization. Um, and we want to give it a hand, we, we want to help it, like, like these future beings, or maybe gods, uh, helped, out, helped out the main character at the end of Interstellar. Now, we, the, okay, so we're going to think about time for this one-dimensional world, or a region of this one-dimensional world. Let's say that this one-dimensional world is very long, right? It extends far off the paper, miles over there and miles over there, but this is just the little part of the world in which this little snake thing is currently living. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to think about this world one second after it currently is, so currently this little snake thing is here, and now we're going to draw another picture of his world, or her world, where we have the snake slightly to the right, okay? Slightly to the right there. Um, this is the time at, at time zero, this is, a, this is at 12 o'clock, this is one minute after 12 o'clock. And then th here's two minutes after 12 o'clock, where the snake is it's slightly moving to the right. It's moving in this direction, okay? And we continue doing this, we draw lots of our lines, and we're doing something a bit like a film strip, right? We imagine, um, you, when you see a film strip that goes into a projector, or at least in a, on a, a celluloid projector, it's a long series of pictures, right, one after the other. And this picture um, and, th and this picture, you can't compare them. They look, they look very similar, but this one is slightly advanced in time by like a 25th of a second. And that's sort of what we're doing here. A series of time steps for this little one-dimensional creature. Um, there we go. And then what we're going to do, take out this thing, take out this long strip here cut it out of its world somehow, because we're special, powerful, three-dimensional creatures that this one-dimensional creature, it can't possibly imagine. We've got amazing capabilities from its point of view. And some, maybe we have power over gravity somehow that Jessica Chastain's character helped us work out, um, and we vastly advanced, so we can control the gravity of this thing by um, picking it up and, like, changing the shape of its world slightly, and indeed, in general relativity, gravity does change the shape of our, the fabric of our universe, and there's lots of videos about that, I'm not going to go into details, you should watch those videos, because they'll have nice animations and things. But what we're going to do here is take out this sort of thing uh, moving over time, and this part of it in space, 
we cut it out and it's a strip <laughs> tear it out fold it up like this okay along the space axis so we're taking a cut out of it from its universe we fold it up like that and now we get a little taped up thing that I made earlier little band here and so our one-dimensional creature it's still only one-dimensional this is a one-dimensional world over time so the one-dimensional creature is here and it can still only there we go it can still only move this way and that way but it'll move over time right let's say this tube is much longer so um what it's going to do it and like Matt, like the main character at the end of Interstellar, the main character at the end of Interstellar, he was in this one room that seemed to be repeated, like in a hall of mirrors, okay? And that's just what this uh, snake character would see. It would see sort of um, its own butt repeated a billion times, uh, because the light would just continue going in a circle. Um, okay. And what I su suggest that they did, they, they were suggesting happened, these five-dimensional creatures cut out Matthew McConaughey from the, from the center of the black hole, and they picked him up and they put him at a previous point somewhere else in his universe, in his daughter's bedroom, right? And let's say here is his, here is his daughter's bedroom. Again, the universe is a great big sheet, and this is only one small part of it, but they put him sort of uh, which way around would he be he'd be like this okay so space along here he can he cannot leave his daughter's bedroom right he can his daughter's bedroom is sort of like wrapped around him like this slightly um and he and you might remember that in the film by moving across along the rooms he could go forward in time and maybe backward in time as well that's how he got from the point where she was eight and he was like making the moves books move to the point where she was 37 and she was thinking about general relativity and what i suggest was that um the uh five dimensional creatures maybe you can imagine them wrapping the universe around him slightly and they allowed him to move the move like this a little bit because remember this is time this is 12 o'clock this is one minute past 12 this is two minutes past 12 down here is like three years after 12 o'clock on this day and we can start thinking about oh maybe they allowed they uh, wrapped him around such that whenever he they saw him do a full circle they moved him down a little bit and they moved him down a little further um, the other really nice thing that happens in this scene is when they close the, the um, when he's done his job, he's communicated the um, work black hole information to his daughter, and uh, they start closing his world. And they've got a lovely animation that I'd love to see again and again, um, where the world sort of clap they sort of collapse in on themselves one by one. I don't really see why they'd happen one by one, but. Um, what happened, what I suspect we were seeing there was them, you know, tearing this thing and making it into a uh, two-dimensional thing again. Now, to help us imagine the room that he was in, uh, remember here I was talking about a one-dimensional creature, and it's really easy to take, like, just a line and connect it up and get a circle, right? Um, and what this one-dimensional creature was going to perceive as a room that repeated itself, that was sort of circular. Um, with a two, we, we go up one dimension now. Imagine a two-dimensional room, just like this one little square. Oh, there's a beautiful spider there, maybe you should see it. Oh, look at that, it's kind of camouflaged against the wood, don't know how well you can see it. Anyway, um, okay, two-dimensional world. We, it's a square, right? We connect this side to this side, so we got the roll, but then we connect the top to the bottom, so we get a sort of donut, right? Two dimensional donut, or what mathematicians would call a torus. And I strongly recommend that you look up toruses. They're pretty interesting things, and magnetic fields are torus shaped, um, they crop up in lots of areas. If you try to blow a smoke ring, the reason that smoke rings are possible is that you've got a sort of torus shaped uh, force. 
look up toruses, they're a lot of fun. And we can kind of imagine a three-dimensional torus. We can, we can try to say, imagine a cube. And we're going to take this cube and join this face of the cube to this face of the cube. So we sort of stretch them around because we're powerful gravitation, we're powerful, you know, advanced civilization that has perfect power over gravity. And we take these two parts of the cube and we turn it into like something that looks like, I don't know, I don't know, a perfect ca a cake with the center taken out. So it's like, kind of like a cylinder. And then we take the top of the cake and we join it to the bottom of the cake. Stretch it around like that, join them together. And so we get like a rubber ring, I suppose, or like a tire where the, we've got, our, we've got our cake shape, we've got our cylinder shape, but there's a hole in the middle. And then inside here, there's, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, a solid thing, but then inside here, there's a hollowed out, there's another little rubber ring, there's another little donut. And here's the part that we can't imagine as three-dimensional beings, but maybe a five-dimensional being would be able to reach inside that donut, stretch it out, and glue it to its outside. So now we have, going back to our cube, we have a room where you're, you're inside and you try to go through this wall, or you try to go through a, a door in this wall, and you come back through here, go through here, you come back through here, and also if you try to go out through the ceiling, you'll come back through the floor. That's kind of what happened uh, in Interstellar. And what I'm suggesting is that uh, they took out this three-dimensional region that he was in somewhere near the center of the black hole. That's the very difficult part. You would be totally torn to shreds if you went anywhere near a black hole. Um, but, okay, they took out that part of his space. They took it back in time because they could see our world moving over time. Um, and they allowed him to see his daughter's uh, universe by sort of having him roll down it, kind of like that. Um, okay, I can't go into too much more detail than that. Um, with Kip Thorne, I suggest um, he was being optimistic and playful when they talked to him and they got him to speculate about a future human civilization that could time travel and that could take bits of the universe and glue them together. Um, I suggest that he was being playful and that he, you know, this is topology, right? Topologists are allowed to imagine anything they like. Physicists and engineers, they've got to be constrained by the laws of nature. And I don't know what the laws of nature, uh, they probably wouldn't be so optimistic about these possibilities. Certainly not with, uh, the energy resources that we have on this planet. But anyway, I hope that's gotten you to speculate. I suggest that if you're interested in this, you look up Tauruses. Maybe you have some fun looking up Klein bottles or the projective plane. Wormholes, non-orientable wormholes, black holes. And if you look these things up on Wikipedia, there'll be lots of very difficult stuff. But go on Simple English Wikipedia and there it'll, there it'll be a bit, more, bit nicer. Um, and yeah, the film, it's a great film in my opinion. They certainly worked very hard on those wormhole and black hole effects and those were definitely plausible, like I say, according to Einstein. According to Einstein, wormholes make sense. They, they're perfectly consistent within general relativity. The question is if we'd have enough energy. Um, all right, hope you've enjoyed this um, and if you have another interpretation, I suggest you make a video about it. And certainly, if you're an animator, please talk to some physicists, because we really it would be really nice to see an animation of a three-dimensional torus. I don't know if that exists yet on YouTube. Um, you could be the first, maybe. And maybe you could be the first to play around with it in some other way and set, have like some pinched area of our universe. The ability to pinch and morph bits of it, that's what would let, allow us to create gravity. Um, and reach gravity back in time. I think that's what they were speculating about. All right, hope you've enjoyed this video. Ta-ta.